Good morning and what a glorious morning it is. Today is particularly exciting because we're going diving again and this time I have some new photography gear but more importantly Liz is doing her paddy open water dive course. So without further ado let's get over to Big Fin over there and get diving. Uh, Liz can you pass me the painter? Well and let me just get on here and then I'll pass you the painter because you're holding on here anyway. No so. no 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 just you get in and I'll take the painter. Oh well I can't get in because you're in the way. I need to get down here, I need to then take the painter off, pass it to you and then get in. Oh God, she's in such a mood. We've talked in the past about how after many years of living in the tight confines of a boat, we've managed to knock the corners off each other yep. <laughs> to make for a smoother relationship. Yes. Of course, it's not perfect. I know you think I am, but it's not perfect. <laughs> and uh, just occasionally there are certain things on the boat that really get on each other's tits, don't they? Yeah, you annoy me most of the time if I'm completely honest about it. But you have said that in front of the camera right now, we're going to name just three things just three things but they all have to do with being on a boat rather than just generally how annoying you are yes so this this isn't really a therapy session <laughs> although i think it actually is to Let's be honest uh, but rather than it just being a ramp we thought we'd try and pick out some lessons that we can learn from yeah. some of the things that annoy each other about each other is that right annoy yeah. each other yes uh to help you cruisers or would-be cruisers to learn a few lessons just to break things up a bit, yeah. because this could get a bit fractious. <laughs> we have got some diving footage. We said in the intro we went diving and I've got some new camera gear. I'm not going to talk about it technically, but we'll put in some little excerpts of the footage I was able to capture yes. uh, in between yes, this to relieve heat, the ranting. heated debate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're doing it in the form of a kind of a court. Each of us will put our case and then the other one will reply. Please rise, court is now in session. Oh, it's been a long, weary trip up the coast from the marina to Cota Balad. It's been pretty grey all day, it's quite flat, it's been windless so there's been no sailing. My uh, rods keep snarling up, changed lures a few times, not a bite apart from the usual plastic bags. So apart from all that, it's utterly joyful. <laughs> to make me even happier, we are now coming into our anchorage and we're probably going to spend 10 minutes while Jamie takes the boat round and round in circles trying to find somewhere suitable to anchor. And that was one of my first pet peeves with Jamie. So that says it all really. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. We come into an anchorage and we spend what appears in my mind to be hours trying to find a, play, a place for the hook to drop. You go round and round and round in circles. If I say anything, get a head bitten off. So I go up the front and I stand there fuming and frying. <laughs> Where are you going to start? I don't know. I'm trying to think of a defence. I am instructing my client not to answer that question on the grounds of self-incrimination. I was always taught to approach an anchorage slowly and to scope it out, mm. to check out where the current's coming from, where the prevailing winds are coming from, obstructions, other boats at anchor, and to not be in a rush because it isn't a race. Uh, and to be happy with the place where you drop the hook. Yeah, but sometimes it, it just seems to take so long. I, didn't, I want to get out of the sun. I want yeah. to get under the... Uh, I want to have a drink or something. Oh, it's a cat. Oh, hello, hello, <laughs> oh it's Tilly. This is I, Tilly. Hello, Tilly. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the problems, though, is that you're stuck out on the on the foredeck in the sun. Of course, we're in the tropics and it is very hot. Yeah, the other thing is I also can't see what you're seeing on avionics. Take your time when you do scope out an anchorage, but if there are two of you, perhaps you don't need to go out on that foredeck 
because you're expecting to drop the hook any moment and there could be a 10 minute delay before we actually get around to doing it so mm. perhaps you should stay in the cockpit with me so that we can discuss together where we're going to drop the hook yeah i think in an ideal situation that's what should happen but i will just stay in the cockpit and get steadily more annoyed so we why are you getting annoyed though <laughs> you why <laughs> It's dithering. In, it's it's Such not a It's not dithering. It's planning. Yeah, okay. Plan your anchorage. You saw in the intro us getting into the dinghy and that happens every single time. After 15 years, Liz insists on a different way of getting into the dinghy. Sometimes she takes the painter, sometimes she has a go at me for not taking the painter. Sometimes she... I was gonna have dinghy as one of mine, but you beat me to it. And there's only one aspect about the dinghy that annoys me. And that is I'm trying to get into it. You're nearly always in it already. I want to get in it and you've left no room for me to get in. You're sitting directly in front of me so I can't stand on the side of it. To get right down into it I can do that but there's no space because there's you and there's a whole load of shit that you fill the dinghy up. You do not think about leaving a space for me and that is why I did this. No, just pass me the paint first. No, I need to get down. And then normally what happens is I get in and I hold the painter. No, look, you just, you pass me the painter Just pass me the I think the lesson to be learned here though is to have a set procedure and of course this doesn't just apply to getting into the dinghy. Procedures, protocols and routines, especially routines that kind of go against the grain with yachties but you do need routines and I think not just getting into the dinghy but uh, for example after hoisting the dinghy we always tidy away the lines and it's really important to tidy away lines in the same way and if there are two of you to have a, an agreed way in which you tidy those lines away and that is because if you're in an emergency let's say it's three in the morning and you've got to get that dinghy back down in the water you need to be able to know how the other person furled up those lines yeah. for example and i think that applies to so many things on the boat is Everything. to have have procedures yeah and yet you still insist on getting in the dinghy a different way every time. And you still never remember to leave a gap for me to get in. I swear to tell the truth, the old truth and nothing but the truth, so anyway. Back to anchoring. Oh God. I could go on about it for days. Things that annoy me about Jamie when we anchor. So this one's slightly different. Um, it's when I'm at the front and I'm either deploying the anchor or retrieving it. And it all comes down to you not looking at me. So when we've deployed the anchor, and I've told you, yep, yeah, 30 metres, whatever it is, is down, I then, sometimes you want the snubber put on immediately, and sometimes you want to let it settle first. We haven't got, you know, so I always look back to see what you want. You just say, put the snubber on, okay, right. put the snubber on. And then you... Come on, you're milking it now, yeah, wrap it up, wrap you're it up. You're at the back and you're not watching me. You've gone downstairs, you're making a phone call. It's because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm just bored of you fannying around at the front of the boat. Yes, it's very annoying. No, quite often if I go down below, it's because I've got to do something else. You like... should have done it before. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. It's communication, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's communication and Liz does have this procedure where when we're putting the boat into a stern to dig the anchor in uh, she is supposed to raise her arm like I this do. but but lately you've just kind of it just sort of hangs in the air and you've got it stuck right out which means the chain is right out yeah. but actually it's not it's still down yeah. I, you've just forgotten to look no. at your arm. <laughs> we did at one point use a little handheld yeah. VHFs uh, the problem with that is they're not waterproof and if there's one time when you really need to be communicating it's in shit weather and uh, I think we kind of destroyed them when it, in a heavy downpour. Yeah, I'd be but, at the front and it's just getting sopping wet. It was, yeah, it you was couldn't, hopeless. couldn't hear anything. But yeah. I, I think definitely communication, clear communication and an understanding of what it is that's expected of each other.
if you can dredge anything up that I do wrong, it's your As turn. I said, you are, two. you are so perfect. I'm scraping yeah. the barrel here. Something about um, going into a marina, I think oh you said, yes. didn't you? Yes, going into a marina. Oh, God. The one thing that really gets me that you consistently do every time, and I tell you about it beforehand and you snap at me to say, I know, I know. And that is after passing the bow line to the person on the dock, what I always ask you to do is to walk to the back of the boat and throw out the stern line or the one amidships. Yep. No, what you like to do <laughs> is to stop and chat because invariably at the moment, the person taking our lines is a friend. We know them. We haven't seen them for a few weeks. And uh, Liz just wants a little natter. Oh, hello, how's it going? <laughs> and I'm at the back of the boat going, Liz, get to the back of the boat while the wind is pushing the side of the boat out. Oh, yeah, am, right. I, am I right? Oh, sort of, because I think what you forget is that we've been doing this so long, I just do it in my sleep. I'm always a bit nervous about getting the line out, because it's me who has to do the, that, that bit. So relieved that they've caught the line. Uh, if it's not someone we know, I have to say, get it round. Right, they got it on. And then I walk back, but I always walk, I don't go too fast, because yeah, I'm worried never about... Run, never yeah, run, never I'm, I'm worried about my feet falling over, blah, blah, blah. But I am always on my way back. And it's as I'm on my way back, you say, get to the back of the boat, and I'm already there. But I can walk and talk. So what I do is I'm, I'm talking as I'm walking. You see what I mean? But I do understand what you're saying. A bit like me at the front with Yanka, you, you need me to be engaged with what you're doing. Listen to what the skipper says, yeah. because ultimately it is them that is in charge and them that uh, takes the responsibility if anything goes wrong. Yes, so. and, and to anyone who's throwing the lines, I always listen to what Jamie says, so I don't release the line or throw the line until he's ready. And quite often somebody on the pontoon will say, hey Liz, throw, it, throw that, do this, and I say, not doing anything till the skipper tells me, just hang on, you know. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, we've had people slipping our lines before. I've asked them to slip the lines, mm. so. Yeah, good point. Well done, you got yourself out of that one, didn't you? <laughs> when people on the boat remove something to use it, they need to be putting it back in the same place. And particularly if it's something that involves having to take eight other things out to get to, because you only use it once a year. And so it's tucked right back, down the bottom, round the back, take it out, take everything out, do whatever you need to do, and then put it all back in the same order. And that applies to stuff on the boat, as well as stuff in the fridge. End of. Your Honour, I object. You would. Bastard. Right, can I just say, in my defence, <laughs> Quite often when I'm getting stuff out, it's to tackle a boat maintenance job. And as anyone who lives on a boat knows that a five minute job ends up becoming a two hour job or a five hour job or a two day job. And what tends to happen is if I don't complete the job at the end of that day, I leave the tools out because I know it's the first thing I'm going to pick up next morning. I don't mind that. That I don't have a problem with. It's when you finish the job entirely yes. and you put stuff back I do. in the wrong order or in the wrong place. Rubbish. It's just like the food. I have a very careful system which has always been the same in the fridge and you want the thing that's at the bottom and you take everything out to get the thing at the bottom then you just chuck it all back in any old way and the thing that was at the bottom is now at the top. Things on a boat are generally stored in boxes, especially heavy objects, because it just makes uh, stowage easier. And also when the boat's moving around, it means things aren't flying around. So, so that's why we have so many boxes stacked on boxes. Yes. And now what I was going to say is that the lesson learned there really is be patient, just work your way gradually through the way it's been stacked and then put it all back properly in the right place. It is something that I'm quite good at doing and you're not so good at doing, uh, but you know, it's just part of boat life. What we try to do is you have the things that we use most often easily grabbable, but there's always going to be something that you're going to need that isn't. Do you know about the, uh, the electrical fairy? <laughs> 
Do you know the electrical fairy? Oh, you probably haven't seen the electrical fairy, the electricity fairy, I should call her. On our boat, we have a magic fairy, and her job is to go around after Liz has been into a room and turn <laughs> off everything. Right, I've got to defend that, and you there have. is no real defence. You should not ever leave stuff on when you're at anchor. Um, you just need to keep everything off as much as possible and I do try to do that and usually I'm quite good but I have to say over the last year we've spent a lot of time in a marina so I've got used to being connected to shore power and mm. it's been glorious. I've turned everything on, I leave all the fans on which is great, it doesn't matter if I leave a light on here, I'll switch it off when I feel like it. So I've just got used to having all that power all the time and then each time I go out to anchor my brain doesn't quickly enough get back to how I should do it but I take your point you're absolutely right. Some of this is moot because of course we now have lithium. Yeah. Uh, before we had lithium I would watch that battery monitor like a hawk uh, turning off everything that we didn't need and especially at night time everything off uh, but there's also the safety aspect as well. Mm. Uh, when we leave the boat at an anchor or even in the marina all the breakers uh, I turn off except perhaps the fridge. So all the time when you're on the boat and turn it all off when you leave the boat? Yep. Okay. So you'll admit that you lost that one? Yeah, sometimes. This trial is a travesty. It's a travesty of a mockery, of a sham, of a mockery, of a travesty, of two mockeries, of a sham. Those are just six of many, many more points I could make <laughs> about Liz. <laughs> And uh, while this was a little bit of a therapy session for us, we hope that uh, you, you learned something from this. And uh, we'd love to know, uh, if you are a cruiser, in the comments, let us know of the things that annoy you about your crew and your, yeah. your partner. Pet peeves. Yeah, get it off your chest. Yeah. So before we go, Liz, uh, we did get some diving in, as you yep. saw from those clips, and you did your, your paddy open water. I did. yeah, second time, so second how, time round. How was it? I loved it, I absolutely loved it. I did it again, because I'd done it three, 30 years ago and hadn't really done any diving since, and I just felt it was uh, sensible to learn it all again. It's a lot easier now, because you've got computer watches and things, so, yeah. uh, uh, but I loved it, and I wanted to make sure that when you go diving, I can buddy up with you. It's such a great shared experience, yeah. and afterwards when you get back on the boat to talk about all the things that you saw, yeah. and I'm so glad that you've done it, and more importantly, that not only did you do it again, but you've really taken to it as well. Love it, yeah. Now I want to buy all the equipment. <laughs> well, we've got another dive tomorrow. Yes, So, uh, looking forward to that. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. More importantly, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you get reminded when we release our next rant. Ooh, thanks for watching. <laughs>